When is this? Hi friends. In today's video, I thought I would talk about some of the things that have changed in the last 20 years here in Mexico for retired expats who are living on the shores of uh, Ajijic, Jalisco, Mexico. Uh, this Christmas will be 21 years since Lynn and I came to Mexico and decided that this should be our principal residence. And a lot has changed in 20 years. Please enjoy my stories or whatever else might be on my mind today. So what's changed in 20 years of living on the north shores of Lake Chapala in Mexico? Oh, first, a short uh, housekeeping note on the channel. I do read your comments and um, I'm sorry that I don't reply to all of them. I used to spend uh, between two and three hours a day answering comments and I uh, just decided that um, the enjoyment of my life and my enjoyment of making the channel, uh, you know, I didn't have time to do that. Don't think that I don't appreciate your comments and don't think that I don't read them. I certainly do. And as you know, I occasionally comment on some of them and I occasionally answer some of them, but I don't do it like I did uh, in the beginning answering each and every one of them, or at least giving you a heart to let you know that I read it. Part of the reason that, a part of the reason for that is that I used to do it on a, a computer keyboard, and it was a different computer, and now I'm using, I, I don't have a keyboard. I got this keyboard at Walmart here. It, 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 it doesn't, I'm a very good typist. It didn't take me a long time because of the, my typing skills. I was the fastest typist in my high school class, and I can still type very fast. And one of the reasons for that, of course, is that I have limber fingers from playing the piano all of my life. But I hate the keyboard. That's part of it. The other part of it is that I read your comments on this uh, iPhone 13 that I have now, and well, typing on a phone is just not something that I enjoy doing. Uh, but that's not what I started to say. Boy, this video is going to get too long. What I started to say is that I am continually now on most of my videos getting a comment that starts out maybe, maybe not to have anything to do with what the video is about. And then there will be, and it seems like it's always 28 replies to that comment. And when you get down to the bottom few replies, it's a solicitation to use a particular person to advise you in buying cryptocurrency. I don't delete it because the more comments I get and the more likes I get, um, the better the channel does, the better it's promoted by YouTube. So whoever's posting all of those comments about buying cryptocurrency, thank you very much. And for the rest of you, <laughs> don't be fooled. By the way, uh, Bitcoin has dropped 72% in value since last November. But I don't want to talk about cryptocurrency. And I don't have any, by the way. So what's changed in Mexico in the last 20 years? Um, I got to thinking about this the other day when I saw uh, a picture of the naked bicycle ride in Guadalajara <laughs> about how things have changed. Um, and I'll show you a picture of that. Stick around towards the end of the video. I'll dig out the picture. The naked bicycle ride in Guadalajara. Anyway, uh, when we first started coming and going to Mexico, and originally the first three years it was back and forth in an old motor home, and we were reading t tourist guides and things and trying to, you know, know how to 
navigate our way through a new culture. And one of the things I remember is that uh, in that kind of literature, it said uh, women from other countries, from other than Mexico, shouldn't wear shorts in Guadalajara. It just wasn't an acceptable part of the culture. And as a man, if you went to Costco in uh, shorts or jeans and a t-shirt, you were underdressed. People at Costco um, 20 years ago always kind of like dressed up in their Sunday going to church clothes. So that really brought it home when I saw that picture of the naked bicycle ride that uh, things have changed. You know, we hear a lot of people, uh, conversations from people who've been here as long as Lynn and I, and we've been here in uh, uh, Christmas this year, it'll be 21 years, we've called um, Ajijic, Jalisco, Mexico, the north shore of Lake Chapala, our principal residence. So we've seen a few changes. A lot of people talk about, oh, the traffic's gotten really bad, or, oh, the prices of everything have gone up. Or, and it's true. That's absolutely true. But I'd like to give you a perspective on it. Um, one of the things that I, one of the things that I uh, always reflect upon in our experience is having looked for a house to buy back in 2002 and three, And I think it was 2002. We looked at a property in a place called El Limon. It's like halfway between Ajijic and Jocotepec, west of Ajijic. And it was five bedrooms. Um, and it was several bathrooms. And it was $78,000. And at that time, uh, the real estate market wasn't as hot as it is here today and as it is in a lot of other places today. But my feeling at that time was you better not buy anything unless you keep, unless you plan on keeping it forever because you're never going to resell it. That was my uh, rather informed and experienced real estate uh, take on buying a residence at Lake Chapala 20 years ago. Well, obviously, I was wrong. <laughs> the market's a little, a, a little more easier to sell something in today than it was then. But the reason that we didn't buy that five-bedroom uh, house out in El Limon is because $78,000 sounded like a lot of money because the tennis court needed to be resurfaced. Well, that should put in perspective if you go and look at some of the real estate. And by the way, if you're interested in real estate, and I'm not a realtor and I don't promote real estate, but if you're interested, go and look at a magazine online called Points South. I don't have anything to do with them. I just have people ask me all the time, what, um, how, how can I look at prices? Points South Chapala edition. Um, it's it's on it's an online magazine that shows ads from all the different realty companies, so you'll get a good idea of the prices and what's available on the North Shore of Lake Chapala. Well, another thing that I thought I might talk about today was a, a comment that I got. Uh, from a couple of videos ago, I had mentioned that even though the U.S. government hasn't raised my Social Security very significantly in the last few years by the COLA, the increase in the cost of living, um, and whatever little bit they did increase it was taken away again by Medicare uh, payments, um, but that the exchange rate had doubled my income because when we first came here, the exchange rate was about 9 or 10 pesos to $1, and now it's 20 pesos to $1. And the comment I made was that even though the U.S. government hasn't done me well with regard to the increase in my Social Security, the exchange rate had provided me a nearly 100% increase in my spendable income in Mexico. 
Well, the comment I got was, hey, that doesn't make any difference because everything else has gone up. Well, I think that person missed the point, and I'd like to make the point. And the point is that um, I started out, I went and got the price of milk to use it as an example, and it was $2.89 in the United States in 2001, and then I checked the day's prices, it's 89 pesos for a gallon of milk here at Walmart, and then I did all of this math, and it got boring. So I'm just going to give you the bottom line. Think about this differently. The price of milk has doubled in 20 years. But so has the number of pesos per dollar that I get. Which means that I'm spending twice as many pesos, but I'm spending the same amount of dollars. Which means that I'm still buying milk at the U.S. milk price of 20, like 2001. Wouldn't you like to be buying your groceries, your cost of living, your rent, your property taxes, all of those things, insurance at 2001 prices? The price of milk doubled. The amount of pesos I get for a dollar doubled. I'm back to where I was then. And then I'll, I know I'll have somebody else who'll say, well, you can't go back 20 years. and st We can't go back 20 years. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about <laughs> right now, today. I'm not living 20 years ago. I'm living now. And I'm buying milk at the same price in terms of U.S. dollars that I was in 2001. And if you need to make another comment about that, go ahead. <laughs> uh, what else has changed? I, have, I made a couple notes here. Phoning home. I think it was more than 20 years ago that E.T. phoned home, but when we first came to Mexico, and we're traveling down through Mexico to get here, and we wanted to check in on our kids back home, we had to buy what was called a LADA card. It was a prepaid card that you could use in a phone booth. If you've been born in the last 20 years, you may not know what a phone booth is, but <laughs> some, of you, some of you will remember phone booths and pay phones. Anyway... You had to buy a lot of card, and then you could use it in the pay phone to call home, and it was expensive. It was like 50 cents to a dollar per minute for those phone calls. And um, we were on a budget. We actually had to budget phoning home to check on our kids. And then uh, once we lived here, uh, there was a different kind of system for a while where you would call a number locally and then it would transfer you uh, to a number, I think it was in Texas, and then from there it would get transferred to the number you were calling. And it was called a long-distance telephone service. And um, there was one guy here at Lakeside who actually that was his business, and he made his living just having people, uh, helping people, make those long-distance telephone calls. And, of course, today that's very different with cell phones and even the landlines here, Telmex. Um, our Telmex and the cost of my Telmex uh, is about uh, $30 a month for the phone service. I pay more than that. I pay about 90 pesos a month, which is about $45. And that includes my Internet, and I get about 25 megabits down. Um, and it also includes uh, Mexican Dish Network. Anyway, on the landline, it's free calling long distance to anywhere in the uh, Mexico, United States, or Canada, which is very different. Uh, even when we first got here and cell phones would work, it was still uh, expensive to make a cell phone call. And now even cell phones, it, it doesn't, on my Verizon phone, which I keep here in Mexico and keep it active here in Mexico, it isn't costing me anything to talk to my kids in um, the United States. So telephone service. 
there's one funny story I might tell you about that. I maybe I don't know. Perhaps I shouldn't judge your sense of humor. <laughs> I think it's funny. <laughs> My daughter, when we were first down here, this might have been two thousand and two or three. Uh, for Christmas, she sent us a video phone. Now, it wasn't actually a video phone. It's what they called a video phone at that time. Internet was slow, and uh, it didn't actually do video. It just it sent you pictures about every two seconds. So they said, oh, the video refresh rate, but it wasn't actually video. It was just like it'd send you a still picture every two seconds. But it was sort of like video and not in slow motion, but in jerky motion. Anyway, she sent us this for Christmas. I think she paid $300 for it. And we had that one conversation on Christmas Day. And it was like, you know, Merry Christmas and we love you, that conversation. And then she mooned us. <laughs> and that's the only time we ever used the video phone. It was just... Um, well, anyway, I shouldn't judge your sense of humor. <laughs> uh, what else has changed in Mexico? You know, it used to be hard to get stuff here. When we first were down here, and for many years, there's a, there's a grocery store called Super Lake. And they import stuff, and stuff is expensive there because they have to pay like a 25% import duty on the things that they get from the United States. For instance, if you get uh, Campbell's chicken noodle soup, it might be, you know, $3 a can. And if you get um, uh, the, the, the same thing made in Mexico, which is going to be labeled in Spanish, uh, pollo con tolares, you are going to pay a dollar a can less or something. I don't know if those are the right prices, but it would be like half the price for the Mexican Campbell's chicken noodle soup pollo con tolares, and on the shelf right above it, it'll be Campbell's chicken noodle soup in English, and it'll be a dollar more because they have to pay an import duty. Anyway, we loved Super Lake because we could actually get things that we kind of wanted. If you really needed a can of chicken noodle soup, you could get it, but it was uh, at cost. There's a uh, we used to tell people who came to visit us, I wanted two things. I wanted um, Hidden Valley powdered ranch dressing mix, which you couldn't get here. Actually, you could get it here, but it was like a dollar in the United States and six dollars here. So that's why they would bring it. And the other thing was Doritos nacho cheese. Today, you cannot get Doritos nacho cheese in Mexico. It's, even, if, even though it might say that, it's got chili peppers in it. Anyway, I would have them bring me Doritos because I was a big Doritos fan. Today, talking about the changes, um, you can get many, many things much more easily. Um, the Super Lake is still here. And then there's another uh, grocery store where they have a lot of uh, imported products, not only from uh, the United States, but from other parts of the world. And it's called Ponchos, and it's, you know, out in Riberas de Pilar, closer to Chapala than Ahihik, but uh, not that far. And uh, they have a fantastic selection of products from all over the world. They also have a, 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 a section where they bring stuff down from Guadalajara from Costco, and still, and they they add like a you know a, a thirty pesos or something like a dollar and a half to the cost of each product. Um, we always uh, get uh, paper towels and toilet paper at Costco in bulk, and it's uh, much more convenient for me to not drive up to Costco in Guadalajara, but to go to Pancho's. And also there's another one on the west side of Ahihik, um, which also has Costco products. And uh, I'd much rather pay an extra buck and a half or two uh, than make the trip up into Guadalajara. And with the price of gas today, it's probably an excellent
cost savings deal. Uh, another thing that m- makes it much easier to get things here. <coughs> um, is Amazon. I'll give you an example. My old Southwind Motorhome had a, 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 a Chevy 450 um, engine, carbureted, but it had a high a HEI, high electric uh, ignition system in it, and you couldn't get wires for that in Mexico. I had a problem and I needed new wires and it wasn't running right because of those wires. And I checked in Mazatlan, Topeka, and Guadalajara at the Chevy dealers and I could not get those wires. I finally had my daughter pick some up in Portland, Oregon and FedEx them to me when I got here and was going to be here a while. Um, and so it cost like $45. 2002, 2003. Two thousand three—that was more money than it is today. To have those wires shipped to me now, you can get stuff on Amazon. I ordered a part for my BMW. Um, I ordered it six days ago, and I got it yesterday. That's five days. I ordered it from um, a place in Connecticut in the United States, and it got here to my house in five days. Now. It was a part cost $6.80, and uh, I had to pay another $4 and something for in, for shipping and duty, but I paid it like $11 for a $7 part. But the fact is, I got it in five days, and it's not a part that's available in Mexico. Anyway, the point is that uh, with Amazon and stuff, and I order lots of stuff from Amazon. It comes right here to my house. And yes, you pay a little bit more. You pay sometimes an import duty, sometimes not. And uh, sometimes it's free shipping, sometimes it's not. So it costs a little bit more usually, but hey, I ordered something uh, 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 It hasn't come yet. I'll show it to you when I get here. <laughs> it costs, it costs, $125 in the United States, and I'm paying about $153 to have it here in Mexico. Um, the difference of that 30 almost $30 is import fees and shipping. But um, I tried finding it here in Mexico on Mexican eBay and Mercado Libre and Mexican... Uh, Amazon is just not available. And I'm happy to pay the extra 30 bucks to get it because it's something I really need and want. Lynn and I have been here longer than uh, Walmart, for sure. We've even been here longer than Soriana, which is another big box store in Chapala. Before that, if you wanted some... Uh, a, a basket full of groceries, a cart full of groceries, and you wanted some other things, like if you wanted a picture frame or you wanted, you know, bug spray or something, you had to go to multiple different little places. So that's another change, is that instead of going to six different places to get different things, um, you can get them all in one place which is just kind of the way the modern world works. But 20 years ago, didn't work that way here. Had to go to a lot of different places to get all the things you wanted to get that day. Well, uh, I guess I've put you off long enough. (laughs) Here's the picture of the naked bicycle ride in Guadalajara. You, you think you, you think the acceptable dress code might have changed? <laughs> I wanted to tell you another video I'm working on. Uh, I think you find this interesting if you are interested in living near Lake Chapala, or if you're already living here. 
my son bought a ranch in Arizona and has his own well, so I bought a test kit, a water test kit, and it's like strips of litmus paper that tells you all of the parts per million of different minerals in your water and different contaminants in your water. And I'm going to do tests on all of the different water right here on my property. Um, I have lake water, I have pool water, I have Tanaka water out of my kitchen tap, and the other part of the house I have city water filtered. Uh, I have uh, bottled water that I buy in the Garifons, the big bottles, and I also have a well, well water. So I'm going to test all those different kinds of water and see what's the difference. Working on that video. Gonna have it done soon. Thanks for spending time with me today. Hey, if you like me, give me one of those thumbs up. And please subscribe and hit that little bell so you know when I post next. Please share me with your friends on social media. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed what was on my mind today.